All right, are we running? Are we live? We shall see. We are. All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well while well, I'm uh, getting up and running here. Get this uh, up on the iPad so I can say hey and see who's awake with us this morning. All right. And good job. Good morning. Carol, good morning to you. Debbie, good morning. Good to see you on here this morning. Alice, good morning. Keenan, bunch of other folks. As always, don't forget to chat and say hi and let us know that you're watching um, and uh, just chime in so I can see who's tuning in and watching with us. What's up, Alyssa? Good morning to you. It was awesome to catch up yesterday and just uh, reconnect and thanks for sharing and just getting me up to speed with life. It was really enjoyable visiting with you. Um, and uh, who else we got watching on here this morning? If you're watching in your uh, Facebook feed, uh, be sure to drop a comment and let us know uh, where you're watching from and um, who you're watching with and all that good stuff. Sierra, good morning to you. Good to see you on here. Um, for some reason, here we go. All right, that thing was being a little bit weird. Got it figured out. Good morning, Leanna. Good morning, Ver uh, Marilyn. And uh, let's see, Angela. Good morning. What's up, Teach? Good to see you. Wendy, morning, Mama Mosa in uh, very cold Thunder Bay. Um, what is your uh, temp this morning? You got to work it out for, for me in Fahrenheit, though, so I know how cold it really is. Uh, Linda, good morning to you. Robin, good morning. Tiana, good morning. How about you too, Tiana? Throw me a Fahrenheit update in the frozen north tundra of uh, uh, Canada. She is in, uh, Wendy's in Thunder Bay, close to Ontario, close to uh, Lake Superior. Tiana is in Alberta, close to Calgary area. So anyway, it's kind of fun. It's, uh, it's not overly hot here today. Morning, Carrie. But the cool part is when you look out the window, you can see light. Hallelujah for that. So, hey, while we're jumping on here and getting ready, um, we're going to do Nehemiah 12, 27 through 43 today. Nehemiah 12, 27 through 43. And then also, um, uh, anybody that's interested in doing that 75 hard challenge that I've talked about, I posted a link to the group in our Jesus Time Facebook page. And so you can click on the link and join the group. By joining the group, you're not committing to do the challenge, just so you know. By joining the group, it just gets you in so that we can communicate, let you know more about what the challenge is gonna be. We're gonna be doing a Zoom meeting um, here uh, not too far down the road um, and get everybody together one evening and answer questions and talk about what exactly the challenge is and uh, when we're gonna start, see if anybody has any other questions. Um, and then we're going to do the start date. We're actually going to start it on March 1st. So if you're thinking about it, you're curious, and you want to know what it would be like to participate in that, then uh, join that group and we'll get you all the info. And if it's a fit and a good thing for you to do at this time in your life, then jump in and join us. And if it's like, that's not a good thing to add to my life right now, don't join it. That's all you got to do. So, all right. Hey, let me pray for us and let's jump in and get with Nehemiah and a big old party they're going to throw today. So, hope you get your party hat. Ready? Man, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the text. And um, Lord, just pray that you would continue to teach us, shape us, help us to become uh, more and more like you and more and more like um, people that are the uh, leaders of the faith, um, Lord, that we get to learn about here. Uh, we just keep seeing all these different ways where Nehemiah was uh, led um, and led by being with everybody and with the people and how much they were committed to be together. And whether it was working on a project or worshiping, we just keep seeing how much they loved to be together. Um, and a lot of that was his pressing them to get out of their comfort zone and be together. And so, Lord, just uh, just keep teaching us and helping us grow and uh, keep helping us learn from your word. And so we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, here we go. We got, uh, let me find the right Bible. Whoops. Pick a Bible, any Bible. We got Nehemiah 12, 27. Um, 
and we're going to dedicate the wall in Jerusalem. It goes like this. For the dedication of the new wall of Jerusalem, the Levites throughout the land were asked to come to Jerusalem to assist in the ceremonies. They were asked to take part in the joyous occasion with their songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The singers were brought together with, uh, from around, if I can read here, the singers were brought together from the region around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netaphetites. Um, they were uh, also came from Beth Gilgal and the rural areas near uh, Geba, Asmaveth, uh, for the singers had built their own settlements around Jerusalem. The priests and Levites first purified themselves, then they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. I led the leaders of Judah to the top of the wall and organized two large choirs to give thanks. One of the choirs proceeded southward along the top of the wall to the dung gate. Uh, Hoshaiah and half of the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. And then came the priests who played the trumpets, including uh, Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zechur, uh, a descendant of Asaph, and Zechariah's colleagues were Shemaiah, Azri, Azrael, Milel, I don't know, Milele, I'm not sure about that one, uh, or the next one, Gilele, uh, my Nathaniel, Judah, and Hanani. Hanani? Sure. They used the musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra, the scribe, led this pre uh, procession. At the fountain gate, they were straight uh, at the fountain gate they went straight up the steps on the ascent of the city wall toward the city of david they passed the house of david and then proceeded to the water gate on the east the second choir giving thanks went northward around the other way to meet them i followed them together with the other half of the people along the top of the wall past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall then past the ephraim gate to the old city gate past the fish gate to the tower of hanel and on to the Tower of the Hundred. Then we continued on the Sheep Gate and stopped at the Guard Gate. The two choirs that were giving thanks then proceeded to the Temple of God, where they took their place. So did I. Together with the group of leaders who were with me, we went together with the trumpet playing, uh, with the trumpet playing priests, Elikiam, uh, Messiah, Miniamamon, <laughs> <laughs> Micaiah, Eloaniah, Zechariah, and Hananiah, and the singers, sure, Messiah, Shemai, Eliezer, Uzai, Johanan, Malkajah, Elam, and Ezer. They played and sang loudly under the direction of Jezariah, the choir director. Many sacrifices were offered on that joyous day, for God had given the people cause for a great joy. The women and children also participated in the celebration and the joy of the people of Jerusalem could be heard far away. So other than my horrible pronunciation of names, as always, uh, I just guess and get it done on some of them. But here's the cool part. Here's what we're seeing is, so now uh, they've rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. They've rebuilt the wall in, and put the gates back in. Their safety, their security. It also is it's sort of helping them feel like, hey, we're a, we're a place again. Like we're not just a heap of rubble. Not only have uh, our people returned to the land, but now we actually have a place to call our own. And, and more than the people have a place to call their own, God is reestablished in the land. Like not only has the temple been reestablished, the wall been rebuilt, but the law has been read and people have been called back to this sense of commitment and faithfulness to the law. And all of those things uh, kind of converge together to end in Nehemiah and Ezra kind of tag teaming and working together to rally all the people, all of, bring all of the people together and get the right people in the right places, the priests in the right place, the choir directors in the right place, the musicians in the right place, the singers in the right place, and everybody else. And, and, and it's like, you could just imagine all of God's people that had returned, uh, according to the, the 
their tribes and according to their people groups and their affinity, right? Like, it'd be like our church, like everybody get with your home group and then your home group, get with the home groups that you're close with and then you guys stick together and we're gonna go surround all of Pullman. We're gonna, we're gonna have a line of people all the way around the city. And so they, they surround everybody like together with their friends and family that they're close with and they're on top of the wall all the way around the city linked arms like piled around the wall the the choir is inside the city surrounding the temple and the musicians are at the you know with the choir and they've the everything's ready to go and it's like all right you guys all ready and the women and children are all over and there's kids playing everywhere and it is like a gigantic joyous festival and out and then just it's like all right on your marks get set let's worship and the band kicks off and the the musicians start playing and the choir kicks in and everybody around the entire city standing on top of the wall belts out hymns and worship songs with all their heart and all their volume and they don't care who's watching and who's listening they, to, to know what God has done and to imagine where they are today compared to where they had been they have everything to praise God about and sing about and they just cut loose right and and just imagine what it would have been like to be uh, in Jerusalem at that time or you know even just to be traveling nearby uh, Jerusalem is on a hill it's the highest thing around for a long ways in every direction and, and there's these valleys that drop off of it and other hills that come up around it it's all really hard services a lot of rock like this sound would have just carried and carried and carried if you were a traveler from afar off and coming towards Jerusalem you probably would have wondered if, if God hadn't showed up like to hear the, the echoing choir of this thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, rallying together um, and worshiping God. So just super, super cool to think about it and to imagine what it would have been like to be there. And um, so like nugget wise, it, just something to be thinking about is like, I know a lot of times people come to church, um, whether you're watching online or you're coming in person. And I know a lot of people struggle with the worship part, not everybody. And if you're the, I love singing, I, the, you get it, right? But, but for a lot of people, they struggle with worship and, and, and particularly when they get together in church, they're like, oh, I just stand, but I don't sing. And, or I kind of sing or mouth the words, but I'm like, you know, like your heart's not really in it. Like you're just sort of doing it because you don't want to look weird. You don't want anybody to think you're not singing and you're more like in your own head, worried about what other people are thinking and all that stuff. And man, that has absolutely nothing to do with worship. That's just stuff. That's just our human nature junk. And I just want you to really, challenge you to stop and think about like like the Israelites at this time look back at where you've been in your life look at how God has interceded look at how God has provided look at how God has rescued look at how God has come through for you look at how different your circumstances are the people that want to stand around you at church like look at the family that God's providing you the the people that maybe you don't even know but they're together with you on the wall on Sunday morning and and I want you to just soak that up and then reevaluate like do a heart check like do I have anything to sing about do I have anything to praise God for do I have anything to to offer up God my worship and my gratitude and my thanks and can I can I belt out the words to these songs because the the words I'm saying mean something like I actually want to say them to God and I don't care who hears because this is about me celebrating what God's done in my life. So anyways, preaching a little bit, but that's the, the kind of nugget stuff that was sticking out for me this morning is like, man, I, I just don't think in Jerusalem on that day, I don't think there was anybody that was worried about what the person next to him thought about their singing voice. I don't think there was anybody there that paused and wondered if they liked worship or not. I don't think there was anybody there that was like, Oh, I, I, I'll come in for the message after the singing's over. But I, until then, I'm just going to hang outside of Jerusalem and have my coffee and talk with my friends. And when the singing's over, then I'll come in, right? Like, I just, I just can't imagine that happening with all that God had done. And, and isn't God the same today? And hasn't God worked so many amazing, miraculous things in our life? And um, I don't know. So just... I just think to prepare your heart for worship, to prepare for the weekend coming ahead, uh, to come and be with us, come in person, worship together. 
I know a lot of you are remote. You can't come in person. Rally on uh, online with us. And when, when church starts, turn on the sound bar, crank up the tunes, hook up an extra Bluetooth speaker, and belt it out and let your neighbors know that it is worship day, right? Like, let them hear and wonder what in the world is going on in your house. It sounds like a party. It is, right? Like, stand on the wall. Get up on your couch and be like, all right, well, let's go. All right. So, anyways fun gets me a little bit excited so you guys are awesome that's my nugget stuff for today don't forget uh tomorrow uh is freebie friday i will not be live but there will be a post friday morning tomorrow morning at 7 a.m there'll be a post that'll pop up you can tune in tomorrow morning look at it at seven you can look at it whenever it works for you as long as you read that post and engage with it before monday there'll be some tips in there about ways to uh, participate, ways to enter to win. Uh, mostly the enter to win thing is fun, right? Like I just want to have some fun with everybody as always. But I, I want you to stay connected and stay engaged with God's word. Just because there's not a live notification popping up doesn't mean you just take the day off and you don't spend time in your word. Same thing throughout the weekend. So this post is designed to help you um, uh, kind of take off on your own, right? Like in, uh, and just stay engaged. And then the cool part is, is it there's so much neat conversation that happens. So if you've not engaged with the Friday posts yet, I would really challenge you to do that tomorrow. Um, to read it, and many of you maybe have been reading it, but you don't actually comment, get in there and comment, drop your comments, share your thoughts, read what other people are writing, and you're gonna learn a lot. You get the, the benefit from the wisdom of a really cool Jesus family that's digging in and learning and growing together. So be sure you engage that post tomorrow morning. All right, so we got all kinds of peeps on this morning. It's good to see tons of you. Sam Smith, a good morning. I don't know if I know you, Sam. Let us know where you're watching from. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Ingrid, awesome, good morning. Christopher Cox, again, another uh, new person. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know where you're watching from. Carrie, good morning, and Carol, good morning, and Matt and Judy, good morning, and Janie, good morning, and Mr. Meester, good morning, Faith, good morning, uh, Martha, good morning, Cheryl, and Kayla, and Joelle, and Randy, and Short Stuff, all kinds of peeps on here. Uh, also, Michelle, uh, I'm bad with uh, Hebrew names. Let me see if I'm bad with your name. Michelle Mahal Mahalko? Mahalko, that's my guess. You're new. Let us know where you're watching from. I apologize if I messed up your name. Help me say it right. Thanks for joining us. All right, let me pray for us and get us off and running on this Thursday morning, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, God, we love you. We just thank you so much for your word. Thanks for this awesome picture of literally tens of thousands of people um, rallying around Jerusalem to worship together. The imagery that that paints in our mind, the the voices that we can hear, the the sounds, the smells, the picture, um, just the encouragement it is to, to just model for us the desire to worship, the commitment to worship, and to just get out of our own head and care way less about what anybody thinks about us singing or how our singing voice is. Um, just keep teaching us and letting this lesson just really um, turn over and over in our minds and our hearts. And let this be a lesson that changes the way we worship together um, from here on out for the rest of our life. Let this be a day where you gave us a new picture of worship that maybe we hadn't seen before. And uh, it changes the way we come to uh, our church services. And so, Lord, just uh, work through us. Change us. Help us become more and more like your son. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. That's it for me. You guys have a fabulous day and uh, look for that post tomorrow morning. Don't forget about the 75 hard post. It's on the Jesus Time Facebook page. If that's something you wanna look up, check it out. And uh, I will uh, see y'all at church on Sunday. Bye.